Dr. Jason Saunders here with HBOT USA and another frequently asked question. So here we're going to talk about the difference between a hard chamber and a soft chamber. There seems to be a lot of confusion here, so I just want to clarify as best as I can and give you some um, practical advice when it comes to looking for uh, the appropriate treatment for you for whatever reason uh, you're seeking to use a hyperbaric chamber. So uh, the real question we need to ask is uh, not as much what's the difference between the two as much as uh, which one do you need, which is based on what's the purpose? Why are you looking to use a hyperbaric chamber? So in general, soft chambers do not go to as high of a pressure, do not have as high as a uh, oxygen concentration, and steel chambers or acrylic chambers can go to much deeper pressures and can have much higher oxygen uh, percentages. So, but more doesn't always equal better. So it really depends what are the issues, what are you using it for, and what are we looking to gain? So here's the thing. Under all circumstances, any pressure, any increase in pressure, or any increase in oxygen concentration, or both, which is what you'll get typically in a hyperbaric chamber, allows for increased oxygen absorption. So whether you're going to 1.3 atmospheres, which is about 4.25 PSI on a hyperbaric chamber, which is considered mild hyperbaric in a soft chamber, or whether you're going to over two atmospheres or two and a half atmospheres in a steel chamber with 100% oxygen, any version where you're increasing pressure and you're increasing oxygen concentration, you are increasing oxygen absorption into your body. The more pressure and more and higher levels of oxygen are required for more severe issues, typically, while less oxygen and less pressure can be used for less severe conditions. So ultimately, it really depends on, again, what are we using the chamber for? So in a hospital setting, which is going to be 100% oxygen at typically pretty high pressures, like two or more atmospheres, you're looking at conditions like a non-healing wound, um, diabetic ulcers, osteomyelitis, gangrene, MRSA, uh, you know, very significant, very severe, very acute, and very um, dangerous conditions. Things that require more of like an emergency type therapy. And so in those scenarios, a mild chamber, like a hyper, like a soft hyperbaric chamber, is not going to be enough to uh, deliver the level of oxygen required for that type of condition or for that person to gain the main benefits of healing. Outside of that scenario, for most of us looking for hyperbaric uh, therapy, you know, we're looking for maybe help with a less severe but more chronic type issue like. Uh, certain autoimmune conditions, uh, autism, uh, post-stroke uh, recovery, post-concussion uh, or TBI, or even just, you know, general uh, anti-aging or, you know, longevity type care. And so for us, some version of mild into moderate is, is more than enough. And so in those cases, somewhere between typically more like 1.3 to 1.5, Atmosphere seems to be the sweet spot for, uh, for recovery or for healing or for uh, performance enhancement. <clears throat> and so uh, soft chambers in the U.S. can only go up to 1.3 right now. Uh, but And hard chambers can also do 1.3 uh, all the way up to you know, 2 and change. Um, but if you wanted to get to, let's say, 1.5, uh, which people do use for concussion and TBI healing or post-stroke recovery or a lot of you know, neurologic conditions, you would need a steel chamber. Um, the biggest difference between the steel chamber and the soft chamber being, let's say, somewhere between 1.3 atmospheres and 1.5 atmospheres, um, you could potentially make that up also with uh, duration and frequency of usage. So uh, when we talk about hyperbaric oxygen, and we've covered this in a few other videos, it's a combination of how much pressure you have, how much oxygen you have, and how much time you're going to spend in the chamber. All three of those variables are important, and all three of those variables can be manipulated in order to get the result that you're looking to have. So, 
if you have a soft chamber, let's say, and you have an oxygen concentrator with maybe about 94% uh, oxygen uh, versus someone else who had a you know 1.5 atmosphere chamber with 100% oxygen, you could do the math to figure this out, but ultimately you will need to spend uh, longer sessions or and or more frequent sessions in the soft chamber to make up for the difference between that and the hard chamber experience. But that doesn't mean you can't get there. You, you actually can. And so in certain cases, you're, you could absolutely be using a soft chamber. Uh, you could be doing that in the convenience of your home. Uh, and you'd be able to create very similar protocols using a soft chamber and a concentrator as you would, let's say, a hard chamber with 100% oxygen if we're dealing with some of these more mild to moderate type conditions. Once we start getting into some more severe, acute, and you know, even life-threatening conditions, we really need to be considering uh, hard chamber, 100% oxygen, often in a facility or you know, potentially in a hospital. So I hope that clarifies things. Um, obviously, like I said, the biggest difference is soft chambers are soft, they're portable, they're mobile, people have them in their homes, uh, but you are limited in terms of how much pressure and how much oxygen you could pipe into uh, those types of chambers versus steel chambers, which are typically, or acrylic, are typically found in uh, clinical settings, sometimes in home settings. Uh, and those have a much wider range of pressure options and a higher range of oxygen uh, levels. Again, more is not better. That's a really important concept I try to drive home to people. It's not always that the more you can get, the better each condition is going to be. Some conditions require or actually benefit more from these mild and moderate ranges, while others benefit more from these uh, much more higher pressure and higher oxygen levels. So I hope that helps. Talk to you soon. Uh, please subscribe to the HBOT USA YouTube channel and uh, we'll have more videos for you soon.